हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू नॉलेज गैलेक्सी टू रीडिस्कवर द बेसिक्स विद मयंक तिवारी ए प्रीमियर कोचिंग एंड ट्रेनिंग चैनल डेडिकेटेड टू मेटलर्जी स्टडीज एंड कंसल्टेंसी इस्टेब्लिश टू कैटर द नीड्स ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स डिग्री डिप्लोमा एंड ए एम आई आई एम मेटलर्जी कंपिटिटिव एंड रिक्रूटमेंट एग्जाम्स फॉर गेट सेल एंड वेरियस अदर गवर्नमेंट एंड प्राइवेट सेक्टर कंपनीज metallurgical industries and who so ever seeking knowledge and information about various subjects and topics of metallurgy operational process optimization productivity improvement analysis concepts like 5as total productivity maintenance tpm quality circle qc root cause analysis rca iso systems qms ems and oshas practical and effective communication english written and spoken my dear friends to impart practical industrial knowledge as per your specific requirements via tailor made training sessions for your colleagues employees and students please contact me on knowledge galaxy 26 at the rate gmail.com or whatsapp me on plus 9199071441 for scheduling and organizing the sessions at your place or via video conferencing my dear friends special dedicated coaching classes are also available for students of am iim indian institute of metals section b all subjects so if you wish to avail that particular subject and need guidance on that subject you can contact me my dear friends in this video i am going to discuss about mechanical equipments of ferrolite furnaces this video is part 2 part 1 is already available in my channel the link is available in the description box of this video the mechanical equipments of ferrolite furnaces comprises the following mechanisms electrode holder its suspension slipping and positioning mechanism and electrode winch furnace cooling system burden conveying systems fan ventilation and electrical tapping apparatus my dear friends first electrode holder its suspension slipping and positioning mechanism and electrode winch this i have already covered in the video part 1 of the same title and in this present video i will be discussing about furnace cooling system burden conveying system fan ventilation and electrical tapping apparatus so let us move and we will start with furnace cooling systems the temperature in the working zone of an electrode holder of a large ferro silicon furnace which is 400 degrees celsius in may rise to 1000 degrees celsius when an over fire occurs the temperature in the working zone of an electrode holder is about 600 degrees celsius during the meltdown period of furnaces working on batch principle therefore the electrode holder and conducting circuitry should be water cooled to ensure normal operation furnaces are provided with the following water cooling systems cooling of current conducting pipes and contact clamps cooling of electrode holder ring cooling of electrode shell and cooling of the surface of the supporting framework exposed to heat from the furnace top water fed into each water cooling system from a post is subsequently returned to the header each feeding branch is equipped with a valve to regulate the water flow in the zone of flexible cables the water is fed and collected with the aid of rubber hoses with thermal insulation each electrode holder should be cooled independently 
Gram cooling system should also be independent and electrically insulated from all other cooling systems. A schematic representation of clamp cooling system is shown in the next slide. This is the diagram of the water cooling system of an 8 clamp electrode holder. Contact clamps are cooled in pairs or in series system that is water out of current conducting tube goes through a copper pipe into one clamp little layer then through a second pipe to the second clamp big layer then again through the little layer into the current conducting tube and after that into the header. Other furnace equipments are cooled in the same way to ensure efficient use of thermal capacity of water that is to lower its consumption. Overall water consumption averages 5 cubic meter per hour per 1000 kVA of transformer rating. The temperature of the outflow should not exceed 50 degrees Celsius to prevent salt deposition on the inner surface of the cooled elements. To remove the salt deposits, it is recommended to flush the cooling system with a weak solution of hydrochloric acid. Water pressure in the feeding system should average 3 atmosphere. <coughs> it should be noted here that cooling water carries away heat. L. I. Morozansky and G. M. Minstein have calculated that in case of a 7800 kVA furnace, the heat carried away by the water amounts to 980 kW with the half being lost through the cooling of contact clamps. Consequently, there has been a tendency of late to use heat resisting elements instead of water cooled ones wherever possible or to utilize the heat of outgoing water. Furnaces requiring no cooling of electrode shells and electrode holder suspension rings have been used successfully in recent years. So now I am going to discuss about mixture conveying and charging systems. Consumption of raw materials for the manufacture of certain grades of alloys exceeds 150 tons per day per furnace. Mechanization of mixture conveying and charging system is therefore of prime importance. Nowadays, preparation and conveying of mixture to furnaces has been fully mechanized. Raw materials conveying flow sheet used in most of the Russian ferrodiesel smelters is shown in the next slide. Mixture prepared in the stockyards is brought by inclined belt conveyors to horizontal conveyors and then by a tripper to furnace bins. The bin shutter is about 3 meters above the platform used for electrode jointing. The shutter is equipped with a vibrating tray feeder as shown in the next slide. From the furnace bins, the mixture is transferred to a monorail proportioning trolley equipped with spring scales. The carriage drive is shown in the next slide is basically a telfer. The carriage moves along a monorail, stops at each bin and takes in the necessary amount of required mixture. My dear friends, the telfer was used mostly in almost all ferrolized producing plants of late but now with the mechanization of the conveying system they have they are being replaced with conveyor belts with automated charging system facilities in most of the ferrolized plants 
it then travels to the furnace pockets and empties the mixture into one of them through a drop bottom the carriage is operated by push buttons a special device forces the carriage bucket to open over one of the pockets the carriage trackage and the furnace pockets are shown in the next slide in the smelting of ferrochrome and ferromanganese the mixture is directly fed to the furnace through the pipes in the case of silicon alloys the mixture in most cases is charged by means of a pico charging machine as shown schematically in the next slide The machine is mounted on a self propelling car moving around the furnace. The direction of swelling may be adjusted to any point of furnace space by means of a rotating mechanism and by changing the angle of inclination of the shovel. The materials are loaded from pockets into the machine bin and then a pusher portions them into the loading shovel. The throwing mechanism is hits the loading shovel with the result that the mixture is thrown into the furnace. A pneumatic damper is provided to soften the impact of loading shovel against such blocks. The use of charging machines has facilitated the work of furnace men rest per man output and may be possible to cut the number of operators. Now let us discuss about exhaust and conveying ventilation. The ferrolized melting process causes considerable evolution of gases and dust. A hood with an exhaust duct rising 5 to 10 meters above the smelter shop roof is installed over the furnace top to remove gases and a forced exhaust system is sometimes used. Exhaust gases should be directed through dust collecting systems. When the escaping gases contain dust laden with oxides of valuable elements, they are usually handled by electrostatic precipitators. Furnaces are provided with shields of diverse configurations to protect workers from heat radiations from the furnace top or melt surface. The shields are secured between the hood and the furnace shell. Moreover, clean, moist air is fed to the working platform by means of powerful fans. The gases which appear when the alloys are tapped are caught by a hood and carried off by an exhaust fan. Let us now discuss about electrical tappers alloys and slags are tapped regularly several times in a shift it is not always possible to open the tap hole with a tapping iron and in such cases it is opened burned through by means of an electric arc generated by a special device This device may also be used to remove the accretions of metal and slag in the tap hole. A schematic diagram of such a device is shown in the next slide. My dear friends, this is the electrical tapping apparatus used but nowadays most of the ferrolai furnaces producers use oxygen lancing to open the tap hole because of the easiness of working the device is connected to the motor terminals of a phase wind winding of a transformer voltage across these terminals is equal to that between the winding and the furnace hearth the device comprises of interrupter switch 1 by means of which current from bus number 13 is fed to holder 
and electrode five. Two buses twelve and two and flexible bands three. The holder is equipped with insulated pad seven, handle six and counterweight ten. The holder is secured to rotating block nine by means of stem eight. The shunt is switched off or on by means of wheel number eleven. The tap hole is burned open by an iron bar or directly by the electrode. Now let us discuss about equipment maintenance and overhauling. This is also very much important as overall campaign life of furnace and productivity of the furnace very much depends upon the wellness and health of the mechanical and other equipments and their proper functioning is functioning is very much necessary. Furnaces. Furnace equipments are inspected thoroughly each shift by the chief furnace man, his helper, and the shift fitter. One of the main factors for the reliable service of the flexible cables and the electrode holder is the normal functioning of the water cooling system. In the event of water failure, the furnace should immediately be switched off to eliminate the possibility of breakdowns. Care should be taken to prevent foreign matter from penetrating into the water header when the furnace is in operation because this causes clogging. The chief furnace man and shift personnel should immediately eliminate hot spots for they frequently cause the breakdown of the electrode holder elements. When operating electrode suspension and travel mechanisms through check wall should be made of fully insulation the condition of the glands which shield the electrode deck from gas and dust the verticality of electrode suspension and the condition of electrode hoisting winch and its steel cables the temperature of the buses in the furnace zone should not exceed 70 degrees celsius Bus sections exposed to furnace top heat radiation should be shielded. Low voltage bus bars and cables should also be protected from short circuits caused by random contacts and furnace splittings. When one of the flexible cables or some other element of the low voltage circuit heats up, it is necessary immediately to eliminate the causes. Period between the repairs depends on the operating conditions of the equipments. Overalls are usually carried out according to the following timetable. This is very much dependent on the individual furnace operating conditions and varies from furnace to furnace and plant to plant. Large load smelting furnaces for silicon alloys carbon and foundry ferrochrome and ferromanganese are shut down for maintenance repairs every 4 or 5 months for 1 to 3 days and once every 5 to 10 years for a general overall for 10 to 20 days. Refining furnaces are shut down for maintenance repairs once a month for 24 hours and once or twice a year for 6 to 8 days for a general overall. Furnaces is melting ferro tungsten are overhauled once every 5 years. General overhauls include mechanical equipment repair, transformer inspection, replacement of low voltage circuitry and as a rule furnace relining. During preventive maintenance shutdowns, special attention should be paid to inspection and necessary repairs of electrical cables with obligatory checkup of all electrical contacts, water cooling systems, electrode holder elements, electrode suspension mechanisms, and hoisting winches. 
charging and proportioning equipment are overhauled ventilation is checked and if necessary repaired inspection of oil breakers oil pump furnace transformer secondary switching and functioning of measuring devices is compulsory lining is partly replaced when necessary my dear friends hope you like the content and found the video worth so please don't forget to like share and subscribe the channel your one subscription will further motivate me to do even better next time my dear friends also remember to press the bell icon so that you can get the notification of the new videos promptly my dear friends i have made many videos on the subjects various topics which are available on my channel i request you to please do visit my channel repeatedly and regularly so that you can gain maximum knowledge which is available free of cost to all of you my dear friends this is all for now i will be hope to see you in the next video very soon do visit thank you very much for watching thank you